My name is Matt and I am an Applications Engineer with Intersil Corporation. Today I'd like to talk to you about two of the sections on the op-amp side of iSIM. iSIM is an interactive web-based tool that allows you to select your supporting components of your design, build your schematic, and then do online validation. It is very easy to use and best of all, it's free. Let's go ahead and take a look. To find the online iSIM tool, go to the Tools drop-down and select iSIM. This directs you to the iSIM landing page. You will notice on the right-hand side all of the operational amplifier tools that are available. There's the Active Filter Designer, which allows you to design high-pass and low-pass active filters, the non-inverting and inverting gain tools, and various amplifier topology tools. In this video, we will cover the inverting and non-inverting gain tools. Selecting the non-inverting gain tool will redirect you to the requirements page. If you have not logged in or register, please do that now. From the requirements page, you will insert all of your design parameters, including your desired closed loop gain, desired minimum small signal bandwidth, your desired input impedance or input resistance, and you can also select an AC coupled source. Once you have entered all of your requirements, click the Continue button. To compare the two tools, I will go back and choose the Inverting Gain tool to show the differences. From the Inverting Gain Requirements page, you will notice slight differences compared to the Non-Inverting Gain tool, but still, they are very similar. You can insert all of your design requirements, including desired closed loop gain, desired minimum small signal bandwidth, your desired input impedance, whether that be manually inputted or have input impedance matching, and you can also select an AC coupled source. Once you have entered all of your design requirements, click the Continue button. The next step in the design tool is the setup page. Let's review this page in sections. First, we will look at the top left portion of the page. This top section is where you input additional design constraints, such as your total supply voltage, your maximum output V peak to peak, the resistor precision, and your intended linearity. Your intended linearity has two options, step and SFDR, or spurious free dynamic range. If SFDR is selected, two more options will be available, which is your target SFDR range and your maximum frequency of the output. If any parameters are changed, be sure to click Apply so they will be updated. Next, we will review the top right section of this page. This section reiterates your design requirements from the first page. It also displays what op amp is currently selected and what the approximate small signal bandwidth would be. Finally, it shows the schematic that will be used. Finally, let's take a look at the last section of the setup page towards the bottom. This section shows the available op amps that can be used with your design. They are sorted by a best fit calculation. The first device in the list is the default selection. If you wish to change this selection, press the Select button next to the wanted part. If you wish to look at the datasheet of a given part, click the part number to see the datasheet. Also, at the bottom you can see that there is a section for alternate op amps. Parts that fall in this alternate op amp section do not meet one or more of the requirements needed for your design calculations. However, they can still be used. Once you have entered your design constraints and selected your desired device, press the Design button at the top right. The next step in the process is the design page. Like the setup page, we will review the page in sections. We will review the tabs at the left corner, then the schematic itself, the analysis tools, but first let's look at the bottom left. This section shows the device that is currently selected and any other versions that are available. Versions will include single channels with disabled, dual channels, or quad channels. The top tab is the page you are currently looking at. From here, you can change component values, run DC and AC analyses, and view alternate versions of your op amp. The second tab is the analysis tab. From here, you can view analyses that have been previously ran. The bottom tab is the redesign tab. 
from here you can adjust certain parameters. In the redesign tab there are a few parameters that may be adjusted. You can adjust the feedback resistor value and the resistor precision. Once you change a parameter, click the calculate button. If you make any changes here, like I am doing 0.5%, you must press the calculate button. This will give you a new set of values on the right. If you wish to apply these values to your schematic, click the apply button. Please note nothing will be changed if you do not click the apply button. Once your design is complete, you now have two steps you can take. The first one is to create a design summary. At the top of the design summary, you can see an overview of your design requirements. Then below this is the schematic with all the component values. Next, you will see a bill of materials, which can be downloaded as an Excel file. Finally, the analysis waveforms will be shown at the bottom. If you would like to download the entire summary, click the PDF download button at the top right of the page. The other option you can take is to go back to the design page and then download the schematic in use on iSimPE. For more information on iSimPE, the offline simulation tool that complements the online tool, please see application note AN1652 in the videos available on the iSim landing page. So the beauty of iSim is that it allows you to completely design and validate your system online without the need for manual computation or going to the bench and testing. For more information on iSim, please go to intersil.com forward slash iSim and register. Thanks for watching.